Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children is directed by Tim Burton, based on the novel by Ransom Riggs, adapted into screenplay form by Jane Goldman. And this is a story of Professor Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters, and stars Asa Butterfield as the boy who stumbles across this school in the 40s. <laughs> I'm just going to keep calling it Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters because I find it hard to say the word peculiar. So a young boy named Jake, played by Asa Butterfield, loses his grandfather in death, and his grandpa always talked to him about this strange school where kids could go to feel safe if they had something that was strange or different about them, or if they had some sort of ability. This kid has very absent-minded parents who don't really pay attention to him, and one day he stumbles through a cave system that leads him to this school in the 1940s. And from there on, our adventure begins. Tim Burton is a director who is very hit and miss for me. He's made some great films, some films I've loved, some films I've liked, and then some that is kind of like, mm, no, mm, no. I was looking forward to this movie though because to me it looked like a cross between X-Men and Harry Potter, and these two things combined yeah, it made me excited, you know, it just made my little nerdisms very happy. This movie has all of the typical great Tim Burton flair, amazing production design, terrific visuals, everything looks and sounds great. It even has a Danny Elfman score that's not actually composed by Danny Elfman. <laughs> It sounds just like Danny Elfman. I guess he wasn't able to compose for this movie. The performances are all great. I really liked Eva Green as Miss Peregrine. She was suitably over the top. She said everything very fast and very astute. She was just so proper. And I really liked her character quite a bit. And as for all the kids at this school with their strange abilities and all the cool things they could do, some were really fun, some were just adorable, and then others like the character Enoch was just extremely annoying and grating, and that character really got on my nerves. But I unfortunately found that the characters I was most interested in in this school were the ones that got the least amount of screen time. The twins, I wanted to know what they were all about. There's a girl named Claire who has a mouth on the back of her head. She was adorable and really funny. And there's a little girl in the movie who is like the strongest little girl on the planet. She can move boulders and do everything with ease and I love that character too. Unfortunately the best kids at this school and the ones that I found the most intriguing were the ones that got the least amount of screen time and that was disappointing to me because the characters that got more screen time to me were the ones I was like oh they're cool you know she can blow air I guess really fast and she can touch things and light things on fire. But unfortunately, my biggest issue with this movie is our main character, Jake. It's not Asa Butterfield. He is mostly pretty good in this movie. There are a few scenes, one in particular in a boat underwater where I felt he was just totally off. I don't know what happened on that day of filming, but for the most part, he's really good in the movie. It's the character, Jake, that is vastly boring. He spends almost the entire film doing nothing but asking questions, and someone will explain something to him because he's obviously very interested in this world and all of these amazing things that he's discovering, and all of these stories that his grandpa told him ever since he was a kid are suddenly coming true before his eyes, so obviously anybody would have a lot of questions, but unfortunately he spends the entire film doing nothing but asking questions and just kind of walking around going, wow. I mean, imagine if Harry Potter just spent all of Sorcerer's Stone just asking people questions. You never see him in class learning about magic. You never see him, Harmione and Ron, going out on some form of an adventure. You never see him actually playing Quidditch. You just hear him asking people about Quidditch. You hear him asking people about how their wands work, about how to cast a spell. You never actually see him doing any of these things. Jake in this film eventually grabs a crossbow and shoots a few arrows, but he really doesn't do much of anything until the final 20 to 30 minutes, and he's a very boring protagonist. Also, the film started out really good. I actually really liked the first act of this movie, and as he gets into this place, and he discovers this time loop, and everything starts happening in front of his eyes, I was like, this is cool! I was really getting into it. I liked the fantastical element of it. I loved the visual style. And then for whatever reason, at the end of that day, he decides to go back to the present, with his boring-ass father at a hotel somewhere. The entire film ground to a halt for me at this point. I mean, imagine if Luke Skywalker, he gets on the Millennium Falcon, he's heading to the Death Star, he gets in the Death Star, and you're like, oh shit, this is getting cool! And then he just goes back to Tatooine for a while. Why would you do that? Or if Chihiro from Spirited Away, after she learns of this cool world and she's learning about spirits and witches and monsters and she's experiencing all these great things, she just goes back on that walk with her parents. 
It's like we've already been exposed to the really cool part of this movie. Why would you go back to the part that was earlier that was kind of like, let's get to the cool stuff, you know? If that's in the novel, which I have not read, I can understand why they would try to keep that in this film. But I'm reviewing the movie, not the book. In this movie, this is a very scatterbrained plot that eventually gets very, very messy and also very convenient. People just appear and say, hey, if you do this, then you can do that. And then we'll have that and everything will be fine. It's like, what? what? How'd that happen? Like, it's hard to explain without spoiling anything, but towards the end of the movie, certain things happen and you're like, how did that even... And eventually one of my favorite actors, the one and only Samuel L. Jackson shows up looking like a demonic version of Don King, is sort of just fun because he's Samuel L. Jackson. I really didn't get his character. It's such a random backstory. It has to do with eyeballs and ingesting them and certain things occur after these eyeballs are ingested and it's just, it's so... I just don't know if it really worked. The film is going for a really cool fantasy vibe and Tim Burton is able to accomplish a lot of that, but unfortunately a very boring protagonist and a story that jumps all over the place from at one point being very interesting to another just being like, get back to the school, please. All of these things led to a sometimes entertaining film with great production design, mostly good direction, some good performances, but a very, very muddled and messy story. I'm gonna give it a C. I was disappointed in this film. I think it could have done a lot more. Sometimes novels just don't translate well to film. This happens a lot. We've seen it happen a lot. And perhaps if they do decide to make the other two books in this trilogy, please first of all actually make it a trilogy. Don't make four films. I beg you. I beg you. <laughs> if they do decide to make them, hopefully they can condense them more and make them more appealing as films. So guys, if you've read the books, let me know what you think of the books below. If you have seen this film, let me know what you thought of the film. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.